Couched in the lush green hills of the Maracas Valley, St. Joseph sits the estate of Ortinola. The original estate spanned approximately 430 acres. Before the capture of Trinidad by the British in 1797, the Spanish settlers of Maracas Valley earned their livelihood by the growing and sale of tobacco. Before 1700 and the 1820s, sugar, coffee, and tobacco gradually disappeared and were replaced by cocoa, which became the chief crop of the valley. Cocoa was cultivated on a very small scale on small estates, and the Ortinola estate has a rich history owing to its diverse owners. It's here that Calvin Maurice, the founder of the Maurice Academy of Design and Craft, shows curious Trinbegonians how homemade cocoa is made into local chocolate. The Maurice Academy of Design and Craft has, uh, has been incorporated since 2012, 2012. And we certainly involved in creative studies, creative arts, so therefore we not only chocolate artistry as we see today, we do things like balloon artistry, uh, leather craft, screen printing, all the creative arts possible. We certify persons um, through City and Girls, and we also do projects through state agencies and certify under um, CVQ based on the state agency. It's a pet project of mine because I believe the cocoa industry can certainly be revitalized um, using the element of the chocolate and chocolate artistry. Uh, my research has shown uh, that the decline of the, the cocoa industry is based on the fact that there's no value added, you know. So the project today, the workshop today, is an initiative to show that uh, from bean to bar, and that's the, the theme of the workshop, from bean to bar, particularly focusing on how you convert from the actually picking the cocoa to uh, making the, the chocolate niblets, making the cocoa paste, making the couverture, and then you go into the all the niceties that you know normally know about. Most persons trained in the chocolate industry locally know from couverture to truffles or chocolate bar. So the school is, over the next few years, going to initiate the, all these local crafts. So therefore, you can use 100% local resources, labor, material, locally to, to add value to enterprises. So this is an ideal project that can add value to particularly cottage industry, particularly cottage industry. So places like um, all where you have the cocoa estates, you can find value added value chains in those communities where they could probably do various aspects of the processes. For example, grinding the cocoa beans, making cocoa paste, making couverture, and it can be a very, very large enterprise. So from this end, from the academy's end, we are going to just get, get involved into the training of individuals, training of entrepreneurs, training of entrepreneurs. How do you make money out of cocoa? You know, uh, so we as Trinidadians, Trin, Trinbingonians, we really need to return to the cocoa industry and see there's value in it. Trinidad and Tobago cocoa is some of the most sought after in the world. Don't believe me? Then how about hearing it from an international expert? I'm from Germany originally, so in our uh, area we don't grow cocoa. So everything is exciting for me. Uh, growing cocoa, processing cocoa, adding value to the beans. Um, so over the last four or five years I've been involved in the development of the local cocoa and chocolate industry. Trinidad cocoa is very, very well known internationally for its fine quality, for its high um, uh, levels of, of floral and, f and flavor notes. So um, uh, people around the world appreciate that, that particular taste. Does Trinidad and Tobago have a future in chocolate? The head chocolate maker at the Ortinola estate shares her views. So right now we do um, 60, 70 and 80 percent chocolate bars, both a large and a mini. We also do cocoa nibs. Um, you know, for people who are looking for a little health boost, uh, they're great in smoothies, etc. We will be expanding into cocoa butter and cocoa powder this year. We have a recipe for cocoa tea, uh, drinking chocolates, with our secret spices of bay leaf, cinnamon and nutmeg, but bay leaf from that tree outside. And yeah, so it's estate grown. 
um, but we just have to work on getting those packaged and that's what's coming out this year. We also have a dark milk chocolate in the uh, coming out soon. Uh, that's it for this year and then next year hopefully we'll expand into a few different flavors as well. The best comment I get is that uh, some people, it's really good for Trinidad chocolate which is good and bad because we, we have great cocoa beans, we're working locally as an industry very hard to get that chocolate to the level we, we want to or what we think is good and I think some people say you know I don't like dark chocolate but I like your 60% dark chocolate. So that makes me feel good because our palates really need to change from, or should change. I mean, nothing is wrong if you like milk or white chocolate, but dark chocolate is so very good for you. And this is, you know, natural stuff, uh, just cocoa and sugar. And eating dark chocolate locally produced, it's so much smarter for us to, instead of just selling cocoa beans for, you know, a price that isn't, doesn't make sense, we can add value right here in Trinidad by making chocolate and cocoa products so yeah not liking dark chocolate but then we have some nice floral and fruity notes in our chocolate so we really hope that that will stand up the test against you know foreign foreign bars and hopefully we'll we'll get to that stage soon Trinidad and Tobago home of some of the best cocoa in the world and the Ortinola estate a slice of heaven on earth